Welcome back to the Topological Mechanics Lab. I'm Vincenzo Vitelli, and I'm here to summarize what you learned in today's lecture. You've seen a bunch of examples of topological mechanical structures. The first one we studied today was this chain, with its intriguing properties, in particular the moving kinks, and the fact that at the position of, of the kink, which is a domain wall in the orientation of these rotors, there is a zero energy mode. It is localized there because the uh, gap closes at that position and enables the kink to move down this, down this chain. An interesting feature is that the position where the zero mode is located is over-constrained compared to the two ends of the chain, which are rigid. And this over-constrained region is actually softer because it can move. Similar behavior can be observed also in two-dimensional examples. For example, we looked at this twisted Kagome lattice, which has dislocations, which are topological defects capable of harboring soft modes, very much like the kinks here. Notice that everywhere far from the dislocation, the structure is rigid. However, this dislocation support a zero energy mode. The other dislocation, which cannot move, support a state of self-stress. State of self-stress are passive player when it comes to motion, but they're still very useful to control how a material responds to compression, in particular how a material fail. We demonstrated that by studying this three-dimensional structure, which is obtained by stacking Kagome lattices like this one, which have an additional property. They have domain walls along which you can um, localize states of self-stress. When you compress such a structure, it will preferentially fail or buckle along the lines of the, um, where the uh, state of self-stress are localized. This allows us to, con to control the way this material fails. What do all these structures have in common? There are examples of topological mechanical metamaterials. A mechanical metamaterial is a macroscopic structure with very unusual properties. For example, the way it transmits sound, the way it responds to mechanical perturbation, the behavior of the elastic moduli. And usually this very unusual property, uh, properties um, originate from the geometry of the unit cell or the geometry of the material more generally, not the chemical nature uh, of the substance of which the individual component of which the material is composed of um, is made. The key feature of me mechanical metamaterials is their tunability, namely by changing the geometry of the unit cell, you can somehow modulate these properties. These mechanical metamaterials are a bit special. They have an additional and at first sight perhaps almost um, contradictory feature to normal mechanical metamaterials. They are topologically protected. That means that there are some properties which do not change if you smoothly deform the structure. This is the exact opposite of tunability, it's robustness. For example, the fact that this um, um, dislocation can support a, a zero energy motion at its center is something that does not depend on the detail of the shape of the triangles of which the structure is made of. However, the, ex the spatial extent of the localized motion that is present here can be tuned by changing the geometry of this, uni of this unit cell, or more, particular, in more specifically in this case the geometry of the triangle, because that um, um, increases or reduces the uh, acoustic gap that exists in the structure. By Trying to close the gap, we can increase the spatial extent of the zero mode. It's another theme that has emerged in the study of all these structures, and namely that topological defects, kings, dislocations, are not just a problem. They can be used as a resource. In fact, they allow us to position this mechanical state in the interior of a material as if we were effectively created an edge inside the material. The second feature that has emerged is the important to study the nonlinear response of these structures. Why is that? Well, a zero energy mode or a state of self-stress uh, can certainly be detected by studying the dynamical matrix of these structures and look for uh, zero entry in the list of the eigenvalues. However, if you want to study the properties of, of the states, you necessarily have to study the nonlinear response as it was demonstrated in the case of this chain where the zero energy mode localized at the edge smoothly um, evolves into a kink 
which is a nonlinear object. The structure we reviewed today are only a handful of examples. There's much more going on in this field. In particular, um, there are structures which are in a different um, topological class than the class BD1, in which all of these examples um, um, are. Um, one example for you is a uh, system that break time reversal symmetry. We didn't have time to cover them, but they're extremely useful. Uh, for example, they can, be, um, they, they can provide a basis to construct uh, um, one-way uh, loss-free acoustic wave guides. Uh, and they can be realized, for example, using circulating fluids or spinning objects coupled together. And there's a lot of work in this direction, both uh, theoretically and experimentally. To sum up, I think I, I hope I convinced you that topological mechanics is a subject in its infancy. And I hope this uh, lecture uh, will serve as an um, inspiration for some of you to continue studying the subject and perhaps also to take steps to convert this proof of principle uh, demonstrations into um, technological um, steps forward. Thank you very much for your attention.